Welcome to another mini video from 2dgamerguru.com. I'm working in Affinity Designer to create an alternative approach to the furball. I'll be using basic shapes, vector brushes, global colors, and gradients to create this green furry guy. In the previous video, I just picked my colors. This time I've prepared a set of global colors. The body and the eyes are a set of circles I created for the previous video. I use the main body shape without the shading inside as the base for my texture brush. I created these seamless fur brushes using lines with tapered strokes. They are available on my Gumroad page. The link is in the description below. I take one of them and assign it to the body. I adjust the stroke width to match and be visible for this video. Place the shape below the body and assign a gradient. The nice thing about global colors is they work on gradients as well as on fills or strokes. Remember to assign the gradient to the stroke, not the fill. I duplicate the shape and scale it down slightly for a denser look. I adjust the gradient slightly to be a little darker as this is the hair that is still behind the body. At the moment, both brush patterns start at the same spot. In order to look less overlapping, I create a new starting point by breaking the shape in one spot. As a result, the pattern of the texture bus starts from here. I duplicate the curve, place it on top of the body, alter the gradient to be lighter. This is the hair that is on top of the body. One thing to keep in mind when working with vector brushes is the fact that they don't mirror. When I flip the shape, it turns the brush pattern inside out. I now have the pointy bits inwards and the faded bases on the outside. You either break the shape, creating a different first node, or skew and scale the object slightly to have some variation between the brush patterns when they overlap this closely. I'm using global colors to make it easier to change later on. It just takes a bit of concentration to pick the global colors rather than use the color picker or adjust the gradient by adding a new stop. I duplicate the shape once more, adjust the start and the colors. One thing you might notice when you work with textured brushes is they scale differently depending on the scale with object on or off. When I turn the option off to have the same widths for all my hairs, the brush texture gets condensed. In the end, I turned the scale with object on and reset the widths after each scale. As you can see, I'm going lighter on the colors for the hair. The gradient now reaches from my lightest green to a mid green. I change the starting point and duplicate once more, readjust the stroke width and the gradient to cover most of the body. I create one more copy that I'm going to place behind the eyes, adjust the stroke width again to match and change the gradient going slightly darker at the base. Somehow I managed to get a lot of nodes into my initial circles. I reduce the nodes and adjust the shape, duplicate it and give it a darker tone, put it behind to add a little bit of depth to the area around the eyes. I duplicate those two shapes and move them over to the right side. I fill the remaining empty areas with lines that I had from the previous design. They are curved lines with adjusted pressure curves. I reduce the stroke widths to match the pattern of the texture brush. Using textured brushes like this is an easy way to create a fur look. By double clicking on the swatch, I can now change the global colors. I change my greens to purples, double clicking on each of the swatches and adjusting the color wheel. And quite obviously, I stuffed up somewhere along the way. A few of them have greens in there that are not part of my global colors. I quickly fix those. The global colors, when done right, allow for quick color changes. Now my green critter is purple. Another quick way to change the colors is an HSL adjustment layer. I create a new layer for all my critter parts in order to not color the two on the left and 
add the HSL adjustment layer. It allows me to change the hue, the saturation and the luminosity, turning it darker or lighter or less or more saturated. When you plan on using the U shift, start out with similar colors, in this case all greens, in order to get better results. In this tutorial, I created the fur effect using simple shapes, vector brushes, global colors and gradients. I recorded a video prior creating the fur effect using lines and pressure curves and another one using symbols and global colors. That way the overall look of the fur as well as the color can be changed quickly and easily. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon and leave a like and I will see you again soon.